2020 has come to a close and it is only right that I do a 2020 special and give you the top 150 best tips that I've given out on my channel yet. Boy oh boy have we had some moments. This will include a variety of tips and tricks taken and put into this video. But throughout the way, I'm also going to be giving you my personal top 20 list where I'd rank each of the tips. So make sure you watch the video to the end to see the number one tip that I would rank in Rainbow Six Siege. And without further ado, let's get on into the tips. Zafia can very easily counter bandit tricking, simply using her concussion mine, firing it in the drone hole, and it is going to concuss him and stop the animation. Nock is actually immune to Mozzie Jones. When she activates her ability, Mozzie won't be able to see her on his drone. Maverick can open a soft hatch with one single use of his blowtorch. With your deployable shields, you can get very creative with some of the angles, simply placing it in a certain position so that you can get a mini angle between one object and the deployable shield. Maverick can destroy a mirror using the four anchor points on the mirror with his blowtorch, disabling the whole thing. Get a free kill placing down your claymore as Maverick, using your blowtorch to open a hole where one of the lasers point through, and any defender crossing that line through the reinforced wall is going to hit it. You can use the cheese hole technique, with Maverick, which is going to create multiple lines of sight for you to get on the enemy and make it hard for them to shoot you. The first tip that is going to be on my personal list is going to be to get the three core pillars down. You need to know the mechanics, the game sense and the mentality. If you lock those three down, you're going to be skyrocketing. If you are going to be opening a reinforced wall as Maverick and you need a bit more cover, shut down a smoke grenade and it will cloak you completely. To open a hatch as Maverick, simply go along a 90 degree angle and then go back down one of the sides and you will be able to open it. Now to actually Maverick open the wall, what you need to do is go along the top row, then go along the bottom, and you will be able to open it hitting the panel. Now you can very easily create a mini Maverick rotation in a reinforced hole, only using one canister if you follow this technique. When playing against a Vigil, the bars are going to increase the closer you get and decrease the further away you get. Number 13, Vigil's ability counters Lion, and also it counters Ayana. When playing IQ, remember to leave the standard barricades up because you can actually use your ability to scan through, take out projectiles behind cover. Number 19 on my personal tip list is going to be VOD reviews. If you're not taking advantage of VOD reviews by getting teammates to review your gameplay, reviewing it yourself, this is what you need to do to improve. You can listen out for flashbangs by listening for that sound when they get pulled out and use this when playing Warden. When a thermite charge gets set off, a lot of dust particles come around. If you use Warden, activate his ability, no particles will show up. Kavira can stop Jackal from pinging her when she activates her ability. The icon will go grey. You can use this Jackal infographic made by user Keyfax on Reddit to find out which footprints are which. Players can actually crawl when downed into a desk or some lower area to stop a Kavira interrogation. They can't get through. Capital can use his ability and actually shoot it through a singular bullet hole. When Finker's ability does activate, Pulse will be able to trap Finker from a larger distance because her heartbeat is going to increase. As well, when Finker activates her ability, smoke canisters are going to deal a little bit of extra damage. A major tip that I have pushed consistently is to not ignore weaknesses. Your weaknesses should not be ignored. You need to work on them and focus on them. If you combine a Malusi Banshee, which is Malusi's gadget, along with her C4 that she can also bring with her, it can make a very, very spicy trap, a death trap for the enemies. It's quite easy to do. All you have to go ahead and do is place it down on a soft floor. Before you do that, you have to make sure that you shoot out a little bit of that wooden soft floor. Then you can chuck your C4 in like I've done here, place the Malusi Banshee to cover your trap up, and there you go. Next up is a tip for those of you struggling with Ella's Scorpion recoil control. If you are struggling with it, the best way to go about it is to simply dump around about 20 to 30 of her bullets into that magazine, the very first one, and then simply let go. What I mean by this is that the 20 to 30 bullets are the ones that are going to have little kick to them, whereas when you get to 30 to 40, you can see it has that sideways kick. And you're not sure whether a defender is going to be holding over electrical. What you can simply do is peek your little head in front and do a quick little jiggle peek looking side to side. If you're on attack and you decide to shoot out the glass windows, you then decide to repel up them, you can be making it a lot easier for the defenders to hear you. Because that glass has been broken, it's 10 times easier for the defenders to hear any sound coming through. A great way to use a flashbang to your advantage is to use the flash and peek technique. This is where you throw a flashbang for the initial defender's reaction, where they simply either decide to turn away from a flashbang, run away in the opposite direction, or simply get cover. You then can go ahead and use this to your advantage. One that I would highly recommend you to use and take inspiration from is this one on border. What I come over here is in open area. I simply go ahead and throw my echo drone onto the TV by the fan. Next up, you will need to shoot out the fan. 
make sure you shoot it out so that your drone can actually jump up because otherwise it's going to get stuck on it. Make sure that you don't get stuck on the side ledge and then when you jump or press the space bar or whatever button it is to jump up on your echo drone, you will be able to land and connect with that top ledge that I'm on here. To hear sound a little easier, make a hole in that soft wall, then reinforce it because sound will travel through it a little bit easier. Number 25, you can actually stim your teammates as a dock player. Not many do know this. Tip number 17 on my tip list is to stop getting empty frags. Empty frags don't provide anything to you and your team. Pick up the frags that are crucial. Number 26, IQ can spot Vigil's ability on the very back of his body. IQ can also spot Pulse when he brings out his cardiac sensor. And as well, IQ with her electronic scanner can also detect Warden's wristwatch. But not only that, she can also see Clash's ability when activated, which does help out a lot. On top of that, when the defuser is planted and the defenders go to defuse it, IQ can see them too through a floor. When the defenders go to check their cameras they get on their phones, IQ can also see this one. Now if you find yourself playing mirror and you've got an ace coming your direction, you can actually mirror trick the ace, simply placing down your ability when ace throws his Selma Breacher. Sophia is going to get a smaller concussion time when she does hit an Ella Grismont mine. And it also works vice versa. Ella will get a smaller concussion time when concussed by Sophia. Tip number 16 is to use the 50-50 rule, which is a rule I came up with on the channel a while back, and that is to take a 50-50 gunfight. If it is any lower than 50, don't peek. Thatcher EMPs have no effect on ACOGs, you will still be able to see that ACOG reticle. But Thatcher's EMPs can actually disable any laser sights that the defenders do have on. They'll be deactivated. Use your Thatcher EMPs in obscure positions. You will be able to take out the bandit charges here on Clubhouse, but also the blue light doesn't appear for the bandit. Now when playing Sledge on attack, you can use this frag grenade if you time it at the perfect second, on a soft floor, you can use it to actually act as an impact grenade, exploding and killing anyone on it. The Lord Tachanka himself cannot be affected by air jabs when on his turret, and as so it should be. When facing a Jaeger ADS, try to burn it with any useless utility you have like flashbangs. Then you can come in with your breaching charge and get through. Remember, he can only zap two utilities. Ash's breaching rounds can actually go through a bullet hole similar to Capital. Shoot a bullet hole, fire ability on through. Thermite's breach charges do have quite a long range, it's not always over when it is electrified, you might be able to get it on a different soft wall. Remember when playing Monty to bind a ping keybind that is going to be easy to access. And the same also applies to Clash, make it easy for yourself. Tip number 47 is a great little villa run out that you can pull off on closet, wait 5 seconds, jump out the window and you'll be by their spawn. A fantastic Valkyrie camera you can pull off on border is simply chucking it under the sink, it covers the position and great view. Tip number 16 is a big one I have mentioned in a few videos, and this is to not get distracted while playing. Get rid of distractions, get rid of your phone, get rid of everything that could distract you and focus on the game. Now on defense, treat your deployable shields like mini mirrors. Use them to pop up and down, gaining an angle. Number 50, you can actually team kill your teammate to see if they've got a Dokeby phone. The phone drops, the attackers have definitely got a Dokeby. If they don't, well then. Now a big mistake I see players making when they're gonna be playing Ace is when they open a reinforced wall, for example, a defender can very easily quick peek over the edge of it when it does open and many players get very very comfortable here instead they don't watch out and they just watch for the longer angles whereas a defender could be close by waiting for it to go off and peek up many players do get very comfortable as well with the maru for example they think they can very easily rush in with their ability catch any defender off guard but the fact is it might not always be clear which is why i would recommend having your drone in the desired room that you're going to be entering beforehand to then quickly flick on it whilst your ability does actually have to charge up first. Next up, a massive mistake I see players making with Ash is they actually use her ability on useless stuff. This is when you are going to be using her ability on barricades to get you a little bit quicker into the building, whereas you should be using it on utility, that is going to be difficult for you to take out, and main soft walls that are going to open up new angles for you and your team. Now, a mistake I see newer players to Blitz making is that they don't realise that their shoulders can get shot. You can very easily be, be killed as your shoulders aren't going to actually be covered when you are going to be holding that shield down. Number 14 is a big one, is crawling under a table will stop a Kavira interrogation. This is a unique trick. A massive mistake I see players making with him when they are going to be using him for that vertical play is opening up way too many areas from above. Simply opening up strategical areas that you have intel on, where an anchor might be holding, that type of stuff is what you want to be aiming for. Now a mistake for Capital and definitely something to be aware of, is that his smoke bolts are going to last a shorter amount of time compared to a regular smoke grenade or attack on an operator like Gridlock, for example. Now, Capitao's smoke bolts are going to last for 10 seconds, whereas a regular attacker's smoke grenades 
will last for 13 seconds. Now, a mistake that I see players making with Dokubi is when they are going to be a little bit too handy with that ability. They use it in situations where it isn't going to be useful. Remember, you've only got two. If you don't give your team a little bit of a heads up when you are going to be activating your ability, it's going to throw them off. There are a lot of buffs and negatives that are going to happen when you activate this ability. So ideally, making a call out, say their recall control, is going to be a little bit different as Finker's ability is going to half it. What you do need to be doing, and a mistake that players do make, is not taking advantage of the chaos and disruption that it is going to cause. It's going to force players to rotate out of their position, move away. You need to be taking advantage of this and looking out for those players. Next up for Glass, players often don't stand stationary when they are trying to take use of his ability and the smoke grenades. When the diffuser is going to be planting, if you throw down your tracks, you are very easily able to disguise the plant with the sound being masked by those tracks. When Habana's pellets do explode, they are going to create a nice destruction and they kind of form together and explode. Therefore, you don't need to perfectly position them, wasting your time. Next up we have for 13 is that the Capcan traps emit a small beeping noise. And this one is a pretty unique one. Is that they aren't going to be actually using the hologram to actually pick up a refrag on the enemy. If you combine it with another player, what you can do when using the hologram is when the defender shoots it out, you can get the other player to come in behind as the intel has been revealed and pick up a refrag. Now for IQ, a huge misunderstanding and misconception for her ability is that when you are going to be using it, often players will break down those barricades, those doorways, those windows to then shoot out the gadgets. In fact, keep those barricades up. You can still shoot through them. Now, a mistake that players are going to make with Jackal is they don't realize a mute can actually counter his ability. It doesn't destroy the whole reinforcement. If you put it on trying to take out Cade Electro Claw, if you position your ability with Kali, a lance at the very bottom of the reinforcement, it's not going to have the radius to take out the Cade if it was positioned at the top. Now, one I see so many players making with the Operator Lion, they're going to be using his ability at the very start of the round. It is completely pointless to do this. Now, with Montaigne, many players don't take advantage of the shield feature that Montaigne does have when you are going to be planted that diffuser. Now, on to Maverick. A big mistake is players will find themselves getting killed when trying to trick the reinforcement. Now, it might be a little bit daunting to do, but one thing to help yourself out and not make this mistake like other players have is don't open it from the bottom first. Number 12 applies to a lot of you who find yourself dying, and it's simply because information dies out within seconds. That callout could die out very, very quickly. Bear this in mind. Players often place their air jabs in the open. These air jabs are going to be very easy to see for defenders or anyone for that matter who is going to be trying to avoid it. Therefore, tuck your air jabs in. Now for Nock, when you activate her ability, it is only going to work if you are going to be walking. But you're running and if you make the mistake of running with your ability on, you aren't going to be cloaked anymore. Next up is going to be Sledge and often players don't take advantage of Sledge's ability. A mistake that they make is they aren't going to be using him for vertical play. Instead, they see him as another entry fragger. Often players don't take advantage of a trick called thermite tricking. Now, this technique is going to allow you to bait out the bandit by making a confusion with sound. And some people might see Ying as an operator who can use her ability, flash the enemies and pick up a few free kills. However, the reality of it is it isn't going to work like that. Instead, often players either avoid the flash or they rotate away. Which is great because instead what I want you to be doing is using her ability to gain a little bit more map control. Now we move on to Zafia and players often like to pick up a kill using her concussion mines, which is actually the big mistake here because the reality is you won't be picking up a kill here. This is very easy to avoid or simply outlast it. Instead, use it to burn those Jaeger ADSs. Then you can switch over to your impact mine which is going to allow you to take out more valuable utility to the defense. Number 11, which I think is absolutely huge for those of you who use T-Hunt, is Border isn't going to have any C4s. This one is fantastic. When throwing a flashbang, be sure to use a technique where you peek before you've actually detonated the flashbang, because often they'll turn away. When vaulting through a window, be sure to check and vault looking down, because you will see if there are any traps below you. On attack, be sure to not jump with your drone, because it brings it into an easier line of sight for the defender. Placing barbed wire directly outside the door, not in it, is going to allow the attacker to hit it on their way up. If Finker's ability has been activated and you step on a goo mine, it's going to completely cancel that Finker boost. Finker's also countered by Mute. She can't activate her ability in the radius of a Mute Jammer. Castle Barricades are always going to be 12 hits no matter what. Castle Barricades also heal themselves. If it gets damaged, you can simply take it down and replace it fully healed. Number 10 is that Chalet also has no C4s. And this one is even better. Always try to use your castle barricades at the last point that you can. Don't trap your teammates in early on. 
You can also shoot out Yin Candelas simply by shooting them with a bullet. You can very easily impact it throwing an impact grenade through a drone hole or simply throwing it over the soft wall like I've done here. Mute is going to counter Jackal, his ability gets disrupted when in the radius of the jammer. If you place a Goyo shield on a window with the canister facing, an Amaru is going to detonate it and die instantly when setting it off. Air jabs can still be detonated even in the smallest lines of sights. You can get creative. Number 9 is one I haven't touched on too much and that line scans are annoying because of the sound they emit, not because it tracks your movement. Use this to your advantage. And also, air jabs can send defenders flying through soft walls, taking damage as well. If you add on a laser sight, four bucks weapon, his skeleton key, his shotgun is going to be your tighter spread. Kali's lance ability can also take out deplorable shields. No utility is safe from her. You can also take out castle barricades using Kali's lance ability. When you shoot Kali's sniper at a clash, it is going to move her shield away from her for a few seconds because of how powerful the bullet is. As well, Sledge's hammer also has a similar effect. And the same applies to Twitch when using her drone. Simply shot the Clash and the shield gets moved away. If you need another counter for Clash, Kaftal will also work too with his Firebolt. Makes it very hard to avoid. Number 8, which is one of my favourites, is masking the plant with gridlock sound. Her tracks make a lot of noise, you can use it to cover up the plant. A Nomad Air Jab is also going to trigger on Clash. If you place it behind her, she's going to go flying in the opposite direction. And the final counter for Clash is going to be a Zephyr Cushion. It has a similar effect and allows you to get the kill. After typing goodnight in the text chat after killing someone, it apparently rises toxicity levels by 75%. Number 7, which I have pushed absolutely everywhere on socials, on the YouTube channel, is that accountability is everything. If you take accountability, you will be able to improve. A great trick for Oryx on cafe is when you dash into the bar, it's going to remove any soft wall, giving you an angle onto the attackers when they go for the plant. As well, Oryx can also knock down any shield operators. He simply dashes into them, knocks them on the ground. A quick tip for Oryx is when you pre-open the hatches in the prep phase, simply put barbed wire at the top because when you climb up it makes it much harder to see your head. Number 6 is one that I did find quite recently and realised how important it was. It's a consistent schedule, building up that practice for T-Hunt, the set time for ranked games all around your life is important. And a fantastic spot that I will always stick by and set up on border is going to be this right here. First of all, I go ahead and place down one in archives. Next up, we move over here and place our Jaeger ADS right here. Then the final ADS is going to be placed right down here. Now, Maestro and Daruni are going to work really, really well together with this new season. And that is simply because if your Maestro camera is in the vicinity of that Aruni gate, it can actually reset it without having to get a defender to come and manually do it. Number five, we are in the top five right now, and it is to use T-Hunt in 25 minute sessions. And then afterwards, take a five minute break in between because this is a productivity technique and it is also going to apply to T-Hunt that not many people use. When you pick a DMR rifle, they can also open hatches in just around about four to five shots. As well, DMRs also have a tad bit increased soft destruction on regular walls. However, if you find yourself wanting to open a hatch with an AR, regular AR, you will have to put around about five magazines into that hatch. Now for number 82, when you're repelling as an attacker on a window, you cannot get downed. You will always get insta-killed, even with Kavira's pistol. Now as well, the Legion, Goo Mine and Frost Mark combination does no longer work. Unfortunately, this one is out of date. A little tip for when you are going to be defending or attacking, it is a lot easier to hear through glass when it has been broken. You can either shoot it out on defense or make sure it's staying up on attack. The best way to counter a bulletproof camera is simply shooting it from the side. From the front won't work, but the side will. Next up is a fantastic way to knife peek. If you use this peeking angle by knifing in front of the doorway, you can easily bait someone out without even having to expose your body. The laser on Maestro cameras have a lot of range to them, which means you can get creative and place them on vertical angles so that they can go through a floor. When playing Gecko, it's best to waste as much time as possible. Therefore, you want to concuss them at the very end when they're going to be planting. Number 88 is that Echo's Yokai's have a big height limit. Therefore, you can go up on skylights and float back down to gather intel. Echo's Yokai will be visible for a few seconds after the ability has been used. Now, using that Echo height placement for number 90, you can actually attach it onto many skylights at the top if you want a solid placement. Next up is the Caden Goyo trick, which I think is absolutely fantastic to cover your Cade Electro Claw with a Goyo shield to stop it from vertical play. Few jammers can counter Ayana. Mute jammers can also affect things vertically, including drones. Mute also counters Dokubi. When you get a call, simply run to the nearest mute jammer. But not only that, Mute also blocks a lion scan. Bearing in mind, you will need to stick with the mute jammer radius. Mute can also counter breach charges and as well the fuse charges. Two great tips and two great counters right there. Then we do have a little bit of a Malusi Banshee, 
C4 Surprise, which I did show in this video so far. That is to, well, yeah, it's to place a C4 under a Banshee. Tip number 97 is that when playing a shield operator, if a C4 comes your way, simply directly look at the C4, you'll take less damage than looking at the side. Alibi's Prismas will not have similar cosmetics to what the Alibi is actually wearing, that's a difference that you can use. And 99 is that to take out an Alibi placed on a window, simply upside down repel to get the angle on it. And the 100th tip is to have an amazing rest of your day. Number one, which is a massive trick and is quite frankly insane, is that the last few seconds of a smoke canister aren't going to damage you. And there are so many people who don't know about this and it could be crucial to pushing in in those last seconds. Those were 150 tips and tricks, including my 20 personal tip tier list. If it did help you out, be sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe because this took a massive amount of time to make across the year. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.